Good evening and welcome to our Wednesday night service online. I'd like to read from Psalm 119 verse 7. It says this, I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. We want to that to be part of our prayer, saying, Lord, we want to learn your righteous r rules. They want, we want them written on our heart so they're a part of our lives because when they are, it says, we'll praise him with an upright heart. So let's open service just that way tonight, saying, Lord, we want your laws written on the tables of our heart so that we'll praise you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening thankful, thankful for your word. And Lord, we want what you have to say written on the tables of our hearts. Lord, so that we'll praise you, so that we'll come to you with thanksgiving, so that we'll offer to you what is due to you. Move in us tonight in this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, church. Let's worship together as we begin with, with a grateful heart. With a grateful heart, I will lift up your name, lift up your name, for you've broken every chain. You have set me free to a life of victory. I will lift up your name, oh my Jesus, with a grateful heart. Never fear, only 
trust and obey, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey, to be like Jesus, to be like Jesus. All I Let's pray for the service tonight. Heavenly Father, we come to you as your people. Lord, we ask that your word would be open to us tonight and that our hearts would be open to receive it. We ask for your anointing upon the speaker. Lord, we thank you that you feed us with the bread of heaven. We pray that our hearts would receive and take it and eat it and make it a part of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Tonight we get to look at the Sermon on the Mount and particularly loving our enemies. So we could ask, why should I love my enemies? Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be the sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. So Jesus tells us right there that you may be the children of the heavenly Father. The Lord is good to everyone. The Lord loves us, and he loves his enemies too. The Lord wants us to be like him. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 7-8, through 8, it says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, 
And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. So, that's a struggle for us, isn't it? If we don't love our enemies, then we have more to learn from God. There's a deeper work for his love to do in our hearts. Because he loves his enemies, he wants us to be like him. He wants us to grow and love our enemies. But if we refuse to learn from him, we have a lot to lose. We can get this right. It can lead us to perfection or being complete. And what if God is really more interested in saving us than he is in saving our enemy? He doesn't want us to just have a get saved experience. He wants to transform us. He wants to deliver us from sin and help us be like him. And his love working in our heart makes that possible. But what happens if we don't love our enemies? Well, there are examples in Scripture. Um, one person I think of is Esau, who did not love his brother Jacob. What happens is that we miss out. We miss out on what God wants. We miss out on possibilities of what God wants to give us, the work he wants to do. We miss out on the peace and the rest he wants us to have. So Esau and Jacob were rivals for many years, but that rival eventually turned out into absolute enmity. The story of Esau and Jacob is scattered throughout Genesis chapters 25 through 33. Esau didn't love his brother Jacob. Jacob had wronged Esau, and Esau wanted to take revenge. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 3, in the King James Version says, A stone is heavy and the sand weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. And we're so very foolish when we try to take matters into our own hands. We often try to justify revenge by saying that we're just making things right, but really we're making matters worse. God says, vengeance is mine. And God did even avenge Esau. Jacob was deceived ten times for his own act of deception. God didn't allow Jacob to get away with it. But God also worked in Jacob's life for the next 21 years to bring the needed change in Jacob. God wanted to change his character. Just like God wants to work in the lives of our enemies, he wants to do things in his time. He wants to work in his way, his timing, and we need to enter into rest and not worry about avenging ourselves. We can let go of whatever the offense is. God wants us to bless others. He wants us to be a blessing. It's a lot easier to bless others when we love them. When we love somebody, we're able to pass over their failures or make excuses for them or just see the best in them. We can see more than the offense. We can see more than what went wrong. We're able to cover with love. Love covers over many sins. And because God loved us, he's covered over our sins. And we want to extend that love to others, even our enemies. The Lord loves us, and he wants to restore us. But Esau didn't have love in his heart, and there was nothing for God to work with. Esau missed out, and he never found repentance. And it's that serious. Jesus warns us that if we do not forgive others their trespasses, the Heavenly Father will not forgive us our trespasses. He's forgiven so much. And he wants us to forgive too. Jacob didn't always do the right thing, but God was able to bring change in, into his life. It could be the same way with our enemies. We don't know if they may change. We don't know what the Lord could do later. The Lord wants to work in them and bring them to repentance. We're often worried that they change and leave us alone, but 
sometimes the Lord is allowing an enemy in our life to bring a change in us. He wants us to grow in that love. And that can be distressing because it hurts. It's irritating. We don't want to do it. It's not natural. But the Lord's calling us to be like him. And it's only possible by his grace. But we can have a better ending than Esau. In way of a positive example, we could look at the life of Joseph. He was wronged by his brothers, and yet he loved them, even though they had caused him much pain. Joseph suffered much due to the unjust deeds of his brothers. Those things did not change that love that Joseph had for them. He still loved them. The story of Joseph and his brothers is found in Genesis chapters 37, 39 through 50. But in Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 21, it says, When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive, as they are today. So do not fear, I will provide for you and your little ones. Thus he comforted them, and spoke kindly to them. When Joseph had the perfect opportunity to take revenge on his brothers, he promised to care for them. There was no retaliation in Joseph's heart. There was no hatred in Joseph's heart against his enemies. Joseph could be trusted with a powerful position because he would use it to bless others and not destroy them. Joseph realized who he was and who God is. Joseph realized that vengeance belongs to God. He said, am I in God's place? Joseph saw the goodness of God instead of the offense. They meant things for evil, but Joseph saw God's hand working for good. He saw the bigger picture and he could let go of the offense. Joseph had rest for his soul. In Genesis chapter 41, verses 50 through 52, it says, Before the year of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph. Asenath, the daughter of Potiphyra, priest of On, bore them to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all my hardship and all my father's house. The name of the second he called Ephraim. For God has made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. And there it is. The Lord wants to give us rest and make us fruitful. Joseph wasn't haunted by the past. He wasn't running away from the pain of what had happened. He was able to forget about it. He was able to be fruitful because he loved. It bore good fruit in his life. Having the Lord's love in our heart makes that possible. It can be possible in our life no less than Joseph's life. So, we want to take that to heart. God is love. He hasn't called us to choose who to love. 
He's told us we have to love our neighbors and we have to love our enemies. He wants us to be filled and overflowing with his love. We want to have rest in our soul. God wants us to rest from carrying things that hurt us. We don't have to go through life beat up. We don't have to go through life haunted. We don't have to go through life running from pain. We can give those things to him and he can help us to forget the pain. We can give our hurts and enemies to God and he will do what is best for everybody involved. That we may be the children of the Heavenly Father. If we are acting out in hate and revenge, well, then whose children are we really? We want people to see the love of God when they see our lives, and we want to have a good testimony. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Thank you, Ron for sharing with us what the Bible says about the Sermon on the Mount, specifically Matthew 5, verses 43 through 48, loving our enemies. We're called to love one another. We're even told that we have to love our enemies. That's a difficult thing for us to consider. We must learn from the Lord and get His source of love in order to be able to do that. What offends us? How long... Will we allow ourselves to carry the pain and the bitterness? Or will we be like Joseph, who loved and as a result saved much of the world of his time? Let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight and say, Lord, we need your love in all situations, towards our neighbor, towards our enemies. We need that from you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight thankful for this message. And Lord, this message convicts us. Lord, you've called us to love our neighbor. You've called us to love our enemy. In order for that to happen, we need something from you. We need power from you. We need enablement from you that we could do that. Lord, we want to extend to others what you have extended to us. Lord, we ask that you'd move in us, touch us the rest of this week. Lord, speak to our hearts, even as we love those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.